astrophysics and medicine sound like strange bedfellows, but our next guest is here to share how the two very different sciences are not only compatible, but a marriage made in heaven. Joining us with an impressive grant to further study this arena is Joe Carson, PhD and co-founder of Pensavision. It's good to see you again. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, congratulations on this massive grant that you've recently been awarded. Yeah, we're we're really excited about it. This is the first time we get to to demonstrate our our medical imaging technology on on real patients. So it's it's a real opportunity for us. So how on earth does astrophysics even begin to correlate with medicine? Uh, well, people often think of that them being as far apart as you can imagine, but when you're I spent most of my career imaging um, extrasolar planets and things in deep space. And when you look at things in deep space, you have a blurry image that's noisy. You have to make sense of it. Um, and when you're imaging in the body, you actually have similar problems. You have something, you have sort of a blurry shape. You need to find out if it's something important, if it's a dangerous tumor or just, you know, a blur in your camera. And actually, if you taking a lot of those tools from astronomy and applying them to the body, you can actually make some some really impressive um, technologies to to be able to do screenings and to see things in the body you couldn't otherwise see before. So tell us more about Pensavision. What is this? Um, so it's a company that I I co-founded um, a few years ago. I was speaking with a professor of medicine, and he was talking about how um, even though we have a lot of amazing imaging technologies, um, a lot of medicine now it's still done by you visit a doctor and you rely on their expertise and there's really an opportunity to to improve things like health screenings with imaging um, in addition to, to bringing down costs. So we um, founded Pensavision as a way of taking low cost imaging tools and doing very high resolution, high sensitivity, three dimensional imaging um, in a way to to be able to save lives and in particular um, we're mostly focused on saving lives um, related to uh, cervical cancer, which is very treatable if you can if you can catch it early by visual inspection. Yes, and cervical cancer brought on by HPV virus, uh, mm -hmm. so very common uh, amongst women. But like you say, very treatable. Cervical cancer, which is preventable uh, by an HPV vaccine because it's associated with HPV. Um, but it's it's still one of the number one kill. It's one of the main killers of women worldwide. It kills hundreds of thousands of of women every year, and so the idea behind behind Pensavision was to come up with a way of doing screenings for it. Um, and it's not something that's necessarily certainly it doesn't replace the vaccine. It's something that's complementary to it. Um, we use these tools as a way of basically a very low cost way of also in a single visit be able to identify a potentially dangerous uh, precancerous lesion and, and offer the opportunity to treat it as well. So not to be confused with HPV and its detection because it is detected through pap smears, this is once the cells start becoming cancerous or does this identify precancerous cells? Um, so we would identify, we would call this identifying precancerous growth. So they're not officially um, considered cancer yet, um, but they're growths that are, you know, that are definitely dangerous. Um, they're the kinds of things that can potentially be deadly if you don't treat them. Um, and there's one of the reasons why what we're doing is unique is that there are a lot of things like pap smears, um, HPV vaccines that are very, very effective tools um, for preventing these things. But at the some of those tools, you know, might require um, multiple visits. They have high costs that are associated with them. There's many people in the world that either can't gain access to that or or don't don't want that. Um, so we're offering a way of doing it, you know, at very low cost, um, without necessarily needing um, lab results or you know waiting three weeks for lab results or multiple visits. We built the technology, like I, I mentioned it, to be low cost, to be um, able to stand alone, even in places that don't have electricity. Um, it operates you know, completely with a mobile computer device. Um, it's battery powered. Um, so we took into account all of those, all of those factors that um, something that's applicable, you know, all the way to the most expensive hospitals that are trying to lower healthcare costs down to 
um, you know, places in sub-Saharan Africa that that might have, you know, are extremely lacking in resources, um, places in South Carolina that are trying to control health care costs, um, and just in general trying to improve, improve access um, to these life-saving tools. Sounds marvelous. I do want to take a break here. When we come back, I want to talk more about this massive grant that you were awarded. Congratulations on that. Uh, pretty special thing. So we're going to do that after the commercial. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We've been chatting with astrophysicist Joe Carson, PhD. He's also the co-founder of Pensivision. He's also a professor of astrophysics at the College of Charleston. And we've just been discussing how astrophysics and medicine actually do go hand in hand. And it's with this company that you have co-founded that you have married the two, which seem very, very different on the face. But when you look deeper, uh, they actually do come together in a unique and beautiful way. And so with your technology, you are hoping to help women around the world quickly detect cervical cancer, which is easily preventable, but then so many women do die of it. Uh, with this company and with your invention, uh, can you tell us about this incredible grant that you received? Yeah, we were really excited about this. So the grant that we have, we applied for was um, to take this uh, 3D imaging camera that we created um, and test it out for the very first time on actual patients. And um, so this is again, this is taking tools that were previously, we, you know, I and my students at College of Charleston previously used um, using with the Hubble Space Telescope, with NASA Spitzer Space Telescope, and we use them inside this camera. Um, so this study is for a, a pilot study of doing 30, about 30 patients um, at an OBGYN clinic um, and uh, of demonstrating this three-dimensional capability and that it can, um, that it can catch these, that it's able to successfully catch cervical um, precancers and do it um, using these very low cost tools. And it's very effective and very powerful. And you scored extremely high when you were applying for this grant. I just yeah. want the world to understand how special and unique the the folks who gave you the grant think it is. Yeah, so the, the grant is from the, the National Institutes of Health and the National Cancer Institute. And on the on the 90-point scale, we were awarded a perfect score, which... Um, I actually thought I thought it was a mistake. I knew we had a strong proposal, but I, I thought it was a mistake because I've never heard of a perfect score. I've never seen a perfect score on a grant like this. And I've, I've been submitting grants, federal grants for, you know, t over 20 years. And I've I've never seen that ever. Um, it, it just shows how how special um, they, they felt this is. And, you know, especially for a grant as, as competitive as that. I mean, these are ultra competitive programs. Uh, oh, sure. we, are, we are really excited about that. Congratulations. That's wonderful. And you operate between here in Charleston and San Diego at UC San Diego. Uh, that's where you're headquartered. But this move, it is going to create down the road some incredible opportunities. Can you just quickly talk about that with about 20 seconds left? Yeah. So all of our technology development is done in um, the low country. That's where we created the camera using, um, in fact, recent graduates from College of Charleston and in, in current students. Um, and our capital, we don't have a factory. We have people. We have smart people. Um, and, you know, the, the graduates that come out of our local universities and just being able to hire really smart people, that's our capital. And that's what we need to do this year is to hire for that and to expand that. For us, expanding is not building a factory. It's hiring really smart people um, that, are, that are here in the low country. The future looks bright, Dr. Joe. Thanks to you. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, and I did want to say it just also, I we couldn't have done this work without the support of organizations in South Carolina supporting science and business like College of Charleston, South Carolina Research Authority, um, and many others that support science and small business in South Credit Carolina. Credit to them. Credit to them. Absolutely. And credit to you and your team. Thank you again. Really appreciate this. Thank you. We're back after this. 